Hey guys, back in the shop today. Um, we are going to be doing a Steve Good project today. Thanks for stopping on my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is uh, Luther. Um, today is going to be a train uh, plaque. Um, so we are going to be doing this train plaque from Steve Good. Um, it's got a number of pieces. It's actually a three layered uh, plaque. So I already have my uh, blue tape attached to this uh, the lumber. We're using uh, quarter inch Baltic birch for this uh, project. Um, and then in my past videos, I never really uh, talked about how the procedure I go through as far as applying my pattern to my to my project. So I'm just going to quick run through that. I use um, first I pick out the wood that I want to use, and then I use this blue painter's tape which I will put on the wood, like you see here. And after that, there's three different uh, ways I usually apply my patterns. Um, if the pattern's not too complicated, not too uh, detailed, I'll just use a, a glue stick right here, one of these little Elmo's glue sticks, and then um, I'll apply it to the uh, tape, and then I'll just use clear packing tape over the top of that. Um, another way is... I will use um, a spray adhesive. This is a temporary spray adhesive. It's a general purpose light. Um, that works real well for applying your pattern to your tape. Um, another way is I have this spray adhesive. Now this is a more heavier duty um, type uh, spray. Um, it holds really well. I'll usually use that if um, I'm using, if I'm Cutting a pattern out that's pretty detailed, has a lot of small parts on it and stuff like that. So three different ways that I apply my pattern um, to my wood. So I have all the all the parts applied to this wood here. Um, it's got the, the back here. Um, it's got the first layer of um, that goes on that. And then it's got the, all the wheels. That you see here which will go on the engine so it actually looks pretty nice when it's all done so we're going to give this a try today um first we're going to head over to the drill press because we're going to be drilling some holes out um my pilot holes for my screw saw blade to go through plus some other holes for the wheels and other stuff so we're going to head over to the drill press get that done and then we'll start cutting on this uh project and um Steve Good website, uh, scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. Give him a visit. He's got a lot of patterns there. So this is where that pattern is from. So we're going to head over to the drill press and get drilling on some of these holes. Okay, here at the drill press, um, the first thing I want to mention is when you're drilling your pilot holes, make sure you got a bit that's... Uh, Big enough for your scroll saw blade to go through, but yet small enough to um, stay out of the way of these your actual pattern. You want this little area right here. Um, you don't want your drill bit too big so it goes into your pattern. So I'm using a 332nd drill bit for this, for the pilot holes. And we're going to drill all the pilot holes first in this project. Then we're going to go back and drill a couple more holes.
So we have all the pilot holes um, for the scroll saw blade here. Now we're gonna drill, uh, you got these holes right here on the engine. I don't know if you can see that, but right here you got uh, a few holes going on in the engine here for decorative. decorative. We're gonna drill them holes and we are gonna use a different size drill bit for that. We're gonna use an eighth inch drill bit for that. So we have the eighth inch holes drilled for that decorative front of the engine there. Um, now, I just noticed I did forget to um, I did forget some pilot holes here on the wheel right here. should be good with the pilot holes. Now, the last thing we have are these holes for the wheels, right here in the center of the wheel. We're gonna do quarter inch with them holes because we're gonna add, we're gonna use quarter inch drill uh, dowels to put in for the axles. So this is a quarter inch forstner bit, or actually, actually that's a, this is a quarter inch, this is a quarter inch forstner bit, which works really good for doing these holes. Now one thing I want to show you, and I've showed this, I've showed this in uh, my past videos when you drill holes because this hole is going to be drilled these particular holes for this engine are going to be drilled all the way through so what I like to do is take my drill bit right here run it down to my table just so that point on that drill bit touches the wood and then I'll set my depth on my drill press and see that just comes out right there so that way, when I drill through this hole here, when I drill through this hole right here, it's just going to leave a mark on the other side. I'll know exactly where to drill when I turn my board over. Okay, we'll, we'll drill one in this wheel too, right here. And what's nice about these forstner bits is they're not like a twist bit where it's going to twist your wood. I tip this over, and you can see it leaves a little little hole right here 
right where you need to go back in and finish your hole. See how that makes a nice, if you can see it, that makes a real nice clean hole on both sides of this piece of wood. No twisting, no chipping of the wood. So I think on this piece we have all the holes drilled. Now on this one here we have another wheel, so we got to do that hole right there. See how that leaves that, that little mark right there? You just gotta line your drill bit up in that mark. And that'll leave a nice clean clean hole on both sides. Then all you gotta do is pop out your piece of wood that's in there. And that'll leave a nice clean hole. We'll do these other ones, these are the front wheels. push out that little scrap wood that's in there. So I think this board has got all the holes drilled in it. Now we have one more piece here. Um, this little piece right here is the light I believe on the ends and there's a little hole right here. So we're going to drill that hole a different size. That's going to be a 3 8 a 3 8 force in a bit. And like I said before, run your run your bit down to your workpiece, to your uh, scrap piece. And that little point will hit the wood and set your depth. We can probably go a little bit more. It makes a little dot there. So now what we're going to do is just find the center of that and drill that hole. See how that leaves a mark right there? All you got to do is line your bit up to that. And see that leaves a real nice clean hole on both sides of your project. So these four center bits work great for doing that kind of work. I don't use twist bits too often. So I think we have all the holes drilled in our parts. And we're gonna head over to the scroll saw and start cutting out some of these parts. Okay, here we are at the scroll saw. Um, like I always said, um, drill, all, uh, drill all your uh, holes in your small pieces. I want to mention that. I always drill all your holes in your small pieces before you actually cut that piece out. Just gives you a, a more of an area to hold on to when you cut the small piece out. And also, when you do projects, make sure you always cut the inside cuts out first before we go and cut this 
whole thing out, cut all these inside cuts out right here. So we're going to start doing these inside cuts right here. And I'm using a number three uh, modified geometry Pegasus reverse tooth blade for this project. Okay, for sometimes when you're cutting these projects, this tape will want to come on the back. On the back, this tape wants to come loose a little bit, and then it sticks on the top of your squirrel saw. So just kind of watch that. Um, make sure it's all down nice. Actually, we're going to cut the inside holes out on this all board too.
Okay, I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move this light. I know you're gonna see a little bit of a glare. Um, hopefully, you can see that. I just gotta be able to see. Okay, so we got all the inside cuts on that section. We're going to cut out some the wheels right here.
I like to cut out all, all the small pieces first. Uh, it just gives you uh, more to hang on to when you're cutting out all this stuff. So we have a little area, uh, if you can see it, it's right there. We're going to cut in with the blade and right there. Okay, we got one word done there.
Okay, we have that cut out. Now we will cut out this back piece. that piece cut out. So there is the backing for that plaque and you got your all aboard right here and you got your some of your wheels right here. So we got to go on to the next piece. which is this right here. And we got some inside cuts. I always cut your inside ones first. That's a good rule to go by.
Okay, so we're going to cut that engine out next. Okay, that is uh, the engine part.
Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna cut these inside holes right here first, so I got more to hang on to. You always want to have a little bit more to hang on to when you do these smaller parts.
Okay, we have that piece cut out. So we have um, these pieces all cut out. We have two more pieces to cut out. So, we have all the pieces cut out, 
here is these. And we have all these other parts. So basically, let me just move this camera a little bit. You can see um, here is all the parts that we cut out. Now, um, that's, that was about a 45-minute cut. So it does take a little bit of time to cut all these parts out. Um, I stayed right at it. And that's about a 45 minute cut. The next thing you got to do is take all this uh, pattern off these um, parts and basically just have to um, take the pattern off and peel all this tape off. Um, it's not one of my favorite things to do. Um, I will say that um, my wife does a lot of this uh, taking the tape off. Make sure you get the clear tape off because that is hard to see sometimes on here. But basically, taking all this tape off these pieces of wood. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take all this tape off these parts. And we're going to sand all these parts. I usually use 120 sandpaper, 220 sandpaper sand all these parts and uh, get them all nice and smooth and all the fuzzies off of them and stuff so and then we'll be back at the, our workbench to get this all put together um now it's probably probably takes five to eight minutes to take all this tape off and probably another 10 minutes or so to um do all the sanding to get all these nice and smooth so um it does take a little while to do this project, but I will be back with all these parts sanded and ready to put together. All right, we are back. Um, we have this all uh, sanded. Got all the tape off, all of it sanded. Let me just try to show you. I got it kind of sitting together here. We don't have nothing glued or um, stained yet, but it's kind of a, it's all put together here. That's kind of how it's going to look. Um, what I'm going to do is stain this. Um, I'm going to use, uh, well, four different colors of stain to, uh, stain all these different colors. But one thing I want to bring up on the wheels, and let me just, uh, on the wheels, if you look on the pattern, it calls for using, uh, quarter inch dowels, and then you would cut the dowel off flush with the face of the wheel. Well, what I do is I have these uh, axle pegs, and I make a lot of toys, so I end up I have a lot of these axle pegs. Um, what I did was just cut them off short, and let me just show you a wheel. Instead of having a flush dowel on that wheel, I just put that axle peg in there, and you can kind of see how that kind of looks. I think it looks nicer having that on there than the actual. Um, flat dowel it actually looks more like a, a train wheel I suppose so that's how I did that and you have to end up you have to end up cutting these um it's hard to see but you got to end up cutting these really short because you're only going to go through uh, two pieces when you go to glue this on this train so that's the only different thing I did so um we're gonna I'm going to stain this up, the four different colors of stain. I think I'm using uh, barn red, golden oak, gunstock, and dark walnut. Then with the four stains I'm going to do on this engine, and then I'll let this dry. Um, I'll probably let it dry overnight, and then the next day we'll um, do this all together. So I'll be back when we get this all stained up and um, finished. Okay, guys, we are back. We got the uh, train wall art all finished and complete. Here it is with the four colors of stain. I think it turned out really nice. Um, only thing I really did different was I used them axle pegs on the wheels. I think that looks 
a little nicer. Uh, and I'll put a link below in the description of where you can get them axle pegs and all kinds of other toy parts. I did use four different colors of stain on this. Uh, barn red, golden oak, gunstock, and walnut is the stains I used on this. Um, only thing I want to say is um, this project took about, I'd say about an hour to finish this project. Um, you have... You have to leave it dry, the stain dry overnight. So you got that. You got uh, the sanding time, the taking the tape off, the pattern time. So it, the project is not a 10 minute uh, project. So that's why my video is not a 10 minute video. Um, so I just want to say that. Um, the, so if you like this video, just uh, give me a thumbs up, ring that bell, and Subscribe to my channel. I got more projects uh, on the way. So uh, we will, I'll see you on my next video. And again, this is the Steve Good wall art, train wall art uh, project. So we will see you on the next video.